Okay, let's start. Hello, good morning, and welcome to today's Bullite webinar. Our webinar is very interesting. It uh, will actually teach you how to use this stuff. So our Bolide IP horn speaker, it's a 15 watt speaker, how to use it, integrating with MVR for real life use. Um, here to help me today is Mike Lugo. Mike, how are you doing? Doing pretty good. Good morning, everybody. In today's webinar, we're gonna go over everything about this IP speaker uh, for us, for you guys joining us today. Again, thanks for your time. There is a chat box on your Zoom menus. There you go, where you can enter questions. So what we'll do is uh, we're gonna go over the webinar live and then we're gonna read questions as we get them. Um, and we'll answer them as we go. All right. So we'll, we'll make this, um, very interesting and, uh, hope you guys learned something today. Okay. So what is this IP, uh, horn speaker? So overall, this is the answer to the question. How do we make surveillance cameras better? You know, for example, you know, gates, fences, Stuff like that, uh, you know, there are active deterrent solutions out there uh, built into cameras. But if you want something louder, you want something that scares off the possible intruders more, then this, this would be your answer. Um, utilizing a, a, a 15 watt a loudspeaker. This is another great addition to a an IP surveillance system, especially the ones with the uh, AI, right? So we're gonna go over um, the camera. We're gonna go over you know how to add them to an NVR, how to uh, connect them to AI functions, real life, and uh, how to use this device on its own. You know, maybe using a third-party VMS or NVR, and we're gonna teach you step by step. All right. So next slide, please. Okay, so a little bit about the specs of this uh, IP speaker. Uh, one thing we want to know is it how loud is this thing, right? So it's um, 113 dB, correct? Yep. Uh, so very loud. So this would be great for even exterior, in interior, exterior use. This thing is uh, has a preamp, right? Yep. Has right, a preamp. Has a preamp. It is a uh, waterproof, IP67 rated. Um, go to the next slide. So it's got the, okay, so it's got a PoE. So uh, so we got this rig set up here in our office. We're going to be using this on today's webinar. What does this speaker look like? It's uh, same, about the same, similar size as a vertical dome camera. You'll see that image there with that dome camera below it so it gives you an idea of the size it's got a metal bracket that you use to mount this thing next slide the relay is on this speaker um so you'll notice there is a well first the, the one that we're going to be using is the rj45 right yes this thing is poe poe from an nvr from an nvr or from a poe from switch a poe switch yep um there's a 12 volt there's input 12 volt in power uh alarm in and out alarm in alarm uh, in alarm in alarm yeah. in and is that rca rca, RCA input yeah. input okay yeah. and you'll notice uh underneath this device there's a microphone microphone sounds pretty clear we'll we'll be able to hear it yeah so we'll go over what it can and it cannot do and go on to the next all right Okay, so let's start now. So let's say you order this device out of the box, you will see a little booklet in the box. Um, don't throw this away, why? Because this will tell you the de default IP address of this IP speaker. So that's the first thing that we need uh, before we uh, add this to the NVR. Yeah. All right, so that's it right here, Mike? Yep. So I. 192.168.5.200. 200. 
And you'll also notice the default username and password is also there. So you don't want to lose this um, booklet. So I'm going to go step by step how to change the IP on your computer, how to log into this camera, how to set it up and then add it to the recorder. So first of all, first thing you want to do is make sure that your computer is on the same IP scheme as this um, speaker. So we're gonna come down here to our network settings, go into my network adapter settings and change my adapters. Now for the sake of the webinar, so I don't lose connection, I am going to just add an IP address to my scheme that's already there. So we're gonna go down to my options, properties, and then IP version four. This is if you're using Windows 10, I'm using Windows 10. Windows 11 is very similar. Uh, you'll notice that I have an I, a static IP already set. So I don't want to lose you guys online. What I'm going to do, here's a little tool, a little help you guys out. I can go to advanced and I can add an IP address in here. So I'm going to add a second IP to my computer. I'm going to add 192.168.5 because that's the scheme I need to be on. And 201, I'll give myself that address. I'm going to add it there. Now that I've added that address, I can hit that camera. So let me open up my browser here. And I am going to go 192.16, oops, 168.5.200. And there we go, right? So going back to my slide really quick, just so you can see there's my address. My username, default username is admin. My password is TM1234. So go back to my username, admin. Admin. My password is tm1234 now i'm signed in so this is just like logging onto an ip camera yep yep basic information and we'll go over this in a minute but first we're going to add this to our system so the first thing i need to do is change my ip and go to basic come down here to my ip address we're going to leave it on static so you go back there's okay so the menu's on the left basic go there first basic our basic and then i'm going to change my static ip to my network i'm on a zero network so i'm just going to change this one octave which is my third octave the five and put it on zero so i'm on the same network as my recorder i'm going to save that so you have to set it to static set it to static yeah so now that that's set saved i can minimize this now I can go to my NVR, pull my NVR over. Here's my NVR and I wanna add it to my NVR now. So I'm gonna go the way we should go through device management. So there's our Bolide VMS. Yes, Bolide VMS is my NVR that I have already attached. Remote parameters. Now I'm inside of my NVR. Now, first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna come down on the left side to voice prompts. And you'll notice. Okay. okay, so voice prompt is a new menu that's been in the Bolide recorders for this year. This year. Yeah. This year. So, but we didn't really have a, a device to utilize it. Now yeah. there is, which is the, this IP speaker. So, voice prompts. And then we'll notice that the third option is IP speaker. Let me delete this one here. We're going to add it fresh. So we need to add a device for this NVR. Yep. It's pretty simple. So I'm going to hit the plus. It's going to ask me for some information. I'm going to name it. Put, like a change, put a Oops. front entrance. Let's act like this is a real life. Front entrance. But we, have, we have the rig in our... Oops. In our Spell it wrong. Entrance. Okay. I already know that my IP address that I just changed is 192.168.0.200. Port is 80 because that's usually the Envif port. The admin. admin. Is it TM1234? TM1234. Okay. Okay. You'll see that it's already added. It's already shows online. Make sure I save that. Now, once I add it here, I need to bind it to a camera. So I hit my channels that I want to bind it to. I have two cameras out there, but I'm going to bind it to channel three. Can you bind it to more than one camera? Yes, I can bind it to every channel if I wanted to. You can see all my channels there. If I wanted to do select all, I can do that. So okay, so if you have a front entrance camera and you don't want it to go off from activities from other cameras, then you just select you one. Select one, yeah. Or if you want it to go off at any point 
there's an event on any of the cameras, so you can do the same. You can do that scenario also. Correct. Or okay. mix and match. Maybe only your outside cameras or, or however you want to configure that. Well, let me cancel that because I already selected. Let me make sure I got channel three is already done. Okay. So now that I bound it to a channel, I can go do some file management. And I want, what do I want my speaker to say or what do I want it to generate? Right. I have a couple options. There's some voice prompt options. I have some already here, but we're going to do some fresh ones. Uh, what is uh, the what's already in the NVR by default? So nothing. Nothing. nothing in okay. There. You yeah. have to set up the. Got to set up everything. Yeah. Okay. So uh, typically, you want to do. You can import a file, and you can do MP3, Wave, or uh, Windows Media file. And all you have to do is hit import. It's going to take me to my browser. I have some files already here that I've already downloaded. I'm going to hit that one, open, and I can add more, right? So I want to do more than one. I want to do that one. Let's do uh, this one here. It's a siren that I added. Now I can upload, let those finish. And these are MP3 files that I'm adding. Awesome. Once that's done, I can, oops, get out of there. There are my files, and I can test what I just um, uploaded. So this one here, I believe, is a – let me enable my speaker. So that's just a typical siren. I uploaded that one, and I also uploaded this other siren. So these things will go off if we the cameras yeah. get set off. So the second way to do it is I can do what's called an Internet Conversation. I'm going to name this just file one because it's just a name. Right. And then whatever I type here, my speaker is going to, my recorder is going to generate a voice and an, an audible voice of whatever I want it to say. Right. So I'm just going to put hello for this one. But I already have some in there. Right. I have some that I already loaded from earlier. I can, Thank you for attending our webinar. Whatever I put in there, it's going to, it's going to speak. So, you know, I have this one as well. Get off my property. Pretty simple, right? I can uh, go ahead and set those files of what I want to display or not display. Audible come out of my speaker when I get a um, notification of motion or AI or however that goes. So now we have that set up. Now I want to be able to attach these to a an AI function or a motion function. Pretty simple. First thing we need to do, of course, set up our AI. Okay, so the analytics. I think the best one to use with this is human detection, right? For sure. Because let's say at nighttime, you're really worried about, let's say somebody jumping. Let's jumping say you have fence. A, this speaker will be used at like large parking, you know, if there's a gate or a fan, yes. something like that, right? Mm -hmm. So motion detection, you can use. You can use motion detection. But that really goes off for everything. Everything. So you wanted yeah. to use... People vehicle. You want to be more specific, yeah. then use human detection. Yep. That's what we tell our dealers. If, if there's a one AI that you want to use, it's going to be human detection. Human detection, yep. So meaning, if there's a person in front of the cameras, this will go off. Yep. And, you know, human detection is pretty easy to set up. You go ahead and enable that. Okay, so yeah. we went to AI setup. Setup. Uh, pedestrian pedestrian vehicle. vehicle. Enable it. Go ahead and set up my settings that I want. You know, by default, this is already pretty much set up for us. Um. Once, so which cameras? So all, any camera that has any AI functions are going to be able to use this. This this okay. uh, actually any camera period we can use this on. Okay. Doesn't have necessarily have to have AI functions. If it has motion, we can use it with motion, you know, or whatever, or whatever we want. Once we once we're set up with our AI function or whatever, how we're going to get these notifications, I can go down here to my alarm setup. So what is an alarm setup? How do I want my alarms to be triggered once I get in this case human vehicle detection? So all this stuff is default. Again, we can leave this all normal, but we're focused on today is the voice prompts. Okay, so there's a voice prompt button there. On the alarm, right. on the alarm right. section. So voice prompt, I can, I just made some, I downloaded some of my um, files here. I also typed some out and I can just select the one that I want. I'm going to select this one. All right, and I want to hear. Get off my property. I already know which one it is. I'm going to bind this to my channel local. I want this to come out just the speaker because some of the cameras also have speakers sometimes. I don't want it to come out my camera speaker if it has one. I only want this to come out my IP speaker. So I'll go ahead and exit that. Okay. 
I'm ready. That's it. So let now we're going to test it out. So let me come back over here. We're going to go to our live view. I'm going to open this up and I'm going to open up my speaker. And you want to go ahead and take a walk in front of it, Ken? Yeah. So I'm going to stay quiet for a second. Ken's going to take a walk. And you'll notice you can probably hear some audio coming out of my my camera right now. I have a microphone set up out there so we can hear what goes on. And we should see San Ken appearing any seconds. Did I not enable it? Let's check. So, no. Check my settings. So give me a second here. There we go. <laughs> so I have it set pretty, and it'll continue to go as it sees them. I'm going to mute that so I don't get too much feedback. So again, I'm going to come back into my recorder. We heard that go off. And I can set this for any of my AI functions. Um, you know, I, I would say, uh, you know, perimeter intrusion is a good one. If you're going to set this around uh, a fence or about a yard, you know, perimeter intrusion is a good one. You can do face detection. If you have someone coming on that they're not supposed to be um, in the area, it gets detected by a face. I can come into my alarm section, face features. And again, down here in voice prompts. I can say, hey, you're not supposed to be here. I can take any of these files that I loaded. And it's going to go ahead and, and say, hey, you're not supposed to be here. Get out of here. Same with license plates. Same with cross counting, crowd density. Any of our AI functions, we can have the recorder go ahead and send out an audible through the speaker. Pretty simple. Um, yeah, really easy to set up. Let me come back over here. Like I said, we can do this with any of our... Uh, AI functions, as well as any of our alarm functions. So motion, uh, input outputs, if you're using the relays on the recorder, you know, we get a trigger, door opens up or something like that. I can also get it, have it uh, send the audible out using PIR, um, any of them. You can, I can even have it on my exceptions, meaning video loss or disk error or or uh, hard drive full. It'll also give me an audible from the So we can do this through any of our alarm triggers coming out of it. So let me get out of here. Any questions so far? No? Okay, so let's move on a little bit. Let's go back to my recorder here. Back to my setup. Um, you will notice, really quick, you will notice an alarm. If you go to face recognition, this is a little different. If you go here to alarm, then you can do... Uh, voice prompts. So if you're doing the face recognition or you're doing the license plates, uh, license plate recognition, it has its own alarm section here. So click there at the bottom, voice prompts, you'll see it's the same menu. Yep. Okay. okay, I'm back. So uh, yeah, that went, that went pretty well. Everybody was able to hear that. Uh, that's how we set it up. You want to move on to going to the actual GUI. We have a question. We have a several questions. One, can you have the voice repeat? You can. Um, up to 200 characters or 200 bytes. You can have it repeat. We think we had to repeat up to five times. Is there a, did you already show that? I didn't. Oh, okay. Is there a, is there a, a loop? It's also a loop management. And this will continue to play uh, whatever file I, I decide to go. Uh, um, like I said, uh, you know, I want to do this one. Thank you for attending our webinar. And it'll continue to say it over Thank and over. Thank you for attending our webinar. Thank you for attending our webinar. Turn that off. I don't want that to be too much. Yeah, so we can loop or we can just set to the file management. Um, you know, I can have internet conversations. I'm just going to put new and then I can say, you know, um, my lawn or something. Um, and I can just repeat this over as well. So copy. So you can just type the same message. Yep, over. Several times. Several times. And I import that. Successful. And when I select it, 
Uh, named it new. Get off lawn, get off lawn, get off lawn, get off lawn. So yeah, a couple of ways we can have it loop or repeat uh, through the recorder. Okay, good. Um, a few more AI, all right, let's go over the AI menus. So same concept, let's just go over what possibilities with other AI, or face, face detection. Face detection, yep. So you can set up the voice alarm if there is a block list. Block list, allow list, or a stranger list. Like I said, it has its own alarm um, section here. For stranger list, for instance, again, it's all the same voice prompt. I select my my file and then select the channels I want to bind it to. I want to bind it to my speaker. Exit. OK, and save. Very simple. A couple clicks, done. Yep. Yeah, so face recognition, you can use it. Uh, license plate recognition. Can right. it go off if there's a license plate? Yes. That is not supposed to be there? Yes. Yeah, so if I have my, den my de deny list, right? Again, it has its own alarm section. Click there. Voice prompt. Again, select the file. So you can put um, vehicle detected, like vehicle on... Den uh, denied vehicle detected. Denied or, vehicle. Yeah. So this could be not for the drivers, but for the security guards. Security guards. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Very useful tool. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and again, any of these AIs. Um, well, let's go over a perimeter intrusion. Perimeter intrusion. So perimeter intrusion, you, you draw a square, like a yeah. shape. Yeah, so perimeter intrusion. I had one set up yeah. out there. Oh, uh, yeah, anybody comes in. Again, you can, can go you in or out. You can connect this to a voice prompt? Yes. So once you set it up, so we're, yeah. keep in mind, there's two sections. I have a setup section. This is the setup my AI. And then I have an alarm section. An alarm is what's going to trigger that alarm. voice prompt. Okay. Yeah, so perimeter yeah, intrusion. Line cross. Okay, next one is... Uh, Line cross is a trip line. Trip line. The, okay. Yeah. Um, yep. Trip line. Draw a line. Draw a line. Uh, cross counting is a uh, count into the box objects that are entering the line. So can you set a particular count? You can. So the count would be alarm number here. So. If I have anybody more than one person, I can go up to 255 people. So and then I can 10. select either coming in or coming out of the box. I can one or the other. So in so let's say there's a limit of 10 people in a let's say 100 people in a in a room. Yep. And there's a hundred and first person, it could trigger that we alarm. can we can write a maximum occupancy reach reach something yep. that goes off from the speaker. Correct. Yep. Okay. That's a good, useful one. Yep. Uh, and then crowd density is kind of the same. Crowd density it's more counts like a, more like number a voider. of people inside yeah. a, an area. Yeah. So, right. So, same thing. Max. Okay. So, max detection number is the maximum number of people. Of people. So, this is, yeah, for, you know, for some restaurants have a maximum occupancy, right? Yeah, for, for little, sure. Little shops. So, the, the difference between the cross counting is going to count the people. It's crowd density is going to tell you when you reach an, a limit. So, inside. Yeah. Inside, inside yeah. the space, yeah. Q yeah. length. So Q length. Is a length of time that a person is in line yep. for something, right? Yep. Uh, I would say good for like um, drive throughs You know, drive throughs always have that little timer going, mm -hmm. you know, or someone just waiting in line for a particular instance. Yeah. Okay. Uh, now... Uh, rare sound detection is so yeah. Rare sound detection. You gunshots, can shots, dogs, and babies crying. Yeah, so you can have cameras with this on, and if it hears a gunshot, it can actually set this thing to go off. Let's say by a guard. Yeah, shots right? fired or something. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. A gunshot detected. Yeah. You can you can set a different message, right? Different message. Yep. Yep. You can can you set different messages for different AI? Yes. Functions? Each, so each AI will have its own function. So again, I'll go here really quick, just to show you. Let's say we did cross counting, right? And cross counting. I want to do uh, this one, right? I'm gonna. Hello. That's my cross counting one. But then I want to do for crowd density. I want to do a different one. I want to do a different a different clip. A different clip. I want to do this one. 
All right. Get off my property. So th that's a different clip. So I can do what every AI can have its own clip if, if need be. And they yeah. can all have their own their own uh, audible. Can you re can you repeat that clip that you just played? Yeah. Right now? Get off my property. I repeat, get off my property. I repeat, get off my property. I repeat. There's something get to be typed up, property. right? Yeah. Yeah. I repeat. Okay, so this yeah. went repeated four times. Four times. Yeah. Um, yeah, again, uh, the, a really good one, I think, would be object detection. Um, you know, because you can have in the object detection, I can set uh, a car or any object, right? Um, but if you have it in your front yard, somebody steals your car in the middle of the night, you want, hey, your car's missing or whatever's gone or, you know, it's a pretty good, cool one if you have it in your front yard. Um, yeah. And of course, uh, an intrusion. That's nah, on this camera. That's a new one. But yeah, uh, any of the AI functions, we can uh, set these audibles to come out of. Okay. And uh, okay. So let's say they want to use motion detection. Right? So let's go to motion. So here's our motion detection. You'll note motion is a little different than the AI, but it still is in alarm. Remember, all this will be found under alarm, either AI alarm or regular alarm. So there's my motion, right? It looks very similar to the other alarm um, uh, settings. Scroll down, voice, voice prompts. prompts. Yeah. Again, select my my file that I want. I'm gonna select it. Oops, let me play that back. I forgot to bind it to a channel. So it's already set. There, I wanna hear. Thank you for attending our webinar. Okay, so now any motion that goes off, I'm going to get that coming out of my speaker outside. And again, uh, like I mentioned earlier, uh, same for alarm triggers in and out. You're going to do the same. Uh, PIR, any of any of the, any of these alarms settings that are getting a, a trigger, I can have it do an audible voice prompt. Oh, nice. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, we have a question from a uh, attendee. Can I upgrade firmwares on my Bolite NVR? Good question. To work? Good question. So the N NDAA models have this uh, firmware. So if you have an NDAA model that does not have this uh, option in it, we can get the firmware for you and, and have it loaded. But it has to be an NDAA model. Okay. So yeah. NDAA models came out last year. Yeah. So if you have your NDR, so it could be up, you can upgrade, upgrade the firmware. Right? Yep. Yep. And we will. We are having. Uh, Quick note: We are having you will be able to use this as a two-way audio. Uh, yeah. So, the, so what we're going over right now are the current features we're working on a two-way voice using this IP speaker. You'll be able to use it through your phone or through the VMS. Yeah. Yeah. So, but in the meantime, um, this is still a very useful device with um, tying into the uh, events that you know that the NVRs capture. Yeah. So as a Added security. Yeah. Okay. So next topic now is what if you have the speaker and you're using it independently? Yep. Um, or if you are, you know, well, let's independently, right? So you 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 got to control it from the camera mm -hmm. menu itself. Yep. So uh, we change our IP to one nine two one six eight zero dot two hundred. Type that in. So another question is uh, is is it on for compliant? If what oh. if I don't have it? I have bow line recorder. It is on VIF compliant. That's a good question. Uh, it is on VIF compliant. Uh, and I'll get into the settings right now. You can let you guys know how you, we can set this up. So TM123. Another question from my guy over here. Uh, will this work on the bow line hybrid DVRs? Yeah. Uh, not yet. We will have it soon. We're getting a firmware for that. Right now, it's just the IP. And, and IP system. IP system. Right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Uh, so we'll see some basic information, uh, just the status, network information. Uh, that's our first menu right here on the left, just status. And we went over yeah. basic, right? Basic is just our time. Uh, most important here is our IP address. We want to make sure this is on the same network. We don't want to set to DHCP because we want to know what the address is on, on, our, on our end, right? Um, and of course, some network information at the bottom, some ports you might need if you have to change the OMVIF port or HTTP port, actually. Or if you're using a secure, then it's, you know, HTTPS, you can change these ports. Uh, VLAN, if you are running VLANs, 
You can enable the VLAN and add a VLAN um, IP to it. So it's got some useful tools on the network section. Uh, moving on, you'll see there's an OnViv button. You do want to make sure the OnViv button is enabled. And there's also a WAN NAT button if you have, you're running a WAN a NAT network into that information. You can have that uh, broadcast to your network. Uh, really important is it's also a SIP device. So, you know, if you're using uh, PA over IP and you have all your SIP information, you can use that and you can have it up to two accounts. So this is a, uh, I'm, I'm going to imagine we're going to get a lot of uh, people ordering this for SIP. If you're using, you know, voice over IP or PBX, you can have this connected to your phone system. And then you see there's an audio button here. So this is the codex that, it is the support, our NVR supports uh, G711U and G711A, but it also this device has a uh, G722 and OPUS codec inside of it as well. Default volume is 60, it goes pretty high. Um, I have it set to 60 because I don't want to disturb all of our neighbors out there, but it goes very loud. Here's the preamp, um, you can have it auto turn on and off. Then it has a jitter function, you know, to uh, so you don't hear any. Um, basically, it's just a buffer. Uh, and then we got uh, high pass filter. I can enable that, and also noise reduction. This is on the speaker side. And if I move down to the mic, I got gain. I can add some gain to it. Again, there's my mic volume. I got uh, acoustic echo canceling, and then I have uh, auto gain control. And I can set that as well, just like I could the speaker. Again, I have a high pass filter, noise reduction, and I can say change the noise reduction levels. Uh, noise reduction, if you don't, that's just like static in the file in the coming through. So if you're using this as a third party, let's say you're using it for a um, alarm out, alarm in or alarm out, and I want it to uh, load a particular audible. I can do it through here, right? I can do any of these bells that are already built in, or I can upload a WAV file. And I uploaded this one yesterday. So I can have those come out of the uh, speaker. If I don't have it connected to a particular NVR and I'm using it either as a SIP or I'm using it through alarm triggers, I can have it do that as well. And here's my alarm settings um, again, uh, SIP information. Uh, go ahead and enable it, how much you want it to cycle, just basic information. And if you want to set an alarm URL, you can also have that come out of it as well. And then I can also set every to, everything to a schedule, and I can have up to 10 schedules of when I want this to be going on or off. Um, yeah, very simple information to put in and get it going. And then right here, if you're running a real-time transfer protocol multicast, if I want to multicast this through 10 different IP addresses, and it supports RTP, we got that function as well. A really cool function that it has is firewall. Um, I know it's just a speaker, but you can set it to allow and unallow sp specific IP addresses to not come in, you know, because these things can get hacked and you can have someone set some kind of, you know, horrible audible over the speaker. You can eliminate that by just, you know, setting up a firewall inside the device itself, which is pretty cool. Um, and then if you're running an auto provisioning network, you would have that information and you can do all that as well. Just enter that information and you'll be auto-provisioned. And of course, our system log, reboot, if you need to default the system or if you need to do a firmware update. And of course, really important, security, username, password, um, that good information. Pretty simple, um, really easy to use, uh, user-friendly. Yeah, I don't, I'm not sure if uh, there's anybody that cannot, wouldn't be able to use this pretty easy sure yeah. and it's a great addition you you got your uh recording you got your ai you got your let's say push notifications on your phones for activity on top of that you have the big loud sound coming from the speaker yeah and it turns your system into a really robust uh, security system not just cameras anymore yeah. okay all right go back to the vms you want to do it one more time? Let's do it. Yeah. Before we Still, wrap up, let me open up the speaker. All right.
do one more test really quick. Oh, there it is. So yeah, you can see it comes through the speaker really well. Um, we're able to hear it. Let me mute that so I don't get too much feedback. Uh, let me mute myself as well. Okay. Uh, yeah, you can see how easy it goes off, how fast it goes off. Um, this is a great product, guys. Uh, I hope everybody gets to utilize it. Um, really loud, really clear. Yeah, any other uh, things you want to bring up, Ken? Yeah, there you go. So hopefully you guys like what you saw today. And yeah, this uh, device is available now. So we have them uh, available to ship. And there we go. Again, thank you guys for joining us on today's webinar. Hope you guys learned something. And uh, next, uh, we'll do we'll do another one uh, very shortly here. You guys have any yeah. questions? We'll stay on for a few minutes. You guys want to type something in? Okay. All right. And that wraps up this webinar. Again, you guys have a great day. Thank you. Thank you, guys.